Gruss was getting so wet whenever she saw the human boys that she decided to quit her job, dump her boyfriend, and buy a one-way ticket to Earth. Arthur Henderson looked up from the malfunctioning Rizian spacecraft engine he was elbow deep in, wiping sweat from his brow. He worked to repair the damn thing all day, having to improvise constantly since he was used to working on human ships, not these fancy alien ones. His human tools weren't exactly compatible with the foreign tech, but Arthur was resourceful. He always got the job done one way or another. The Rizian crew watched in awe as this lone human used all sorts of unorthodox methods to fix their ship. They'd never seen anything like it. Most of them had never even seen a human up close before. But one Rizian, a young female student named Gruss, studied Arthur more intently than the others. Her iridescent scales shimmered as she cocked her head, piercing him with her striking amber eyes. She wasn't just impressed by his mechanical skills. No, this went deeper than that. There was something about his gritty ingenuity, the way he improvised on the fly and always seemed to pull through, that stirred something primal within her. Human males were so different from the soft, entitled Rizian boys she was used to. Arthur exuded a raw, almost aggressive confidence she found incredibly alluring. Gruce swallowed hard, heart racing as she approached Arthur. He looked up, surprised to see a Rizian so close. They usually kept their distance. I'm Gruss, she said. I study xenobiology at the university. I'm fascinated by you humans. I'd love to learn more about your kind if you're willing to teach me. Arthur narrowed his eyes and crossed his arms, smearing some engine grease on his bicep. He wasn't used to aliens taking an interest in him, unless they needed him to fix something. I don't know, he said. I'm not really looking to be studied like some sort of lab rat. No, no, nothing like that, Gruce said. I just want to talk, that's all. I've never met a human I connected with before. Arthur sighed, then shrugged. All right, fine. I get off work in an hour. There's a cafe not far from here. We can chat there. Gruss beamed, her sharp teeth glinting. I'll see you then. As she walked away, Arthur found himself wondering if maybe, just maybe, she was interested in more than an academic discussion. He'd never been with a Rizian before. Hell, he'd hardly ever talked to one. But damn if there wasn't something about her that drew him in, like a moth to the flame. Little did Arthur know. His entire life was about to change in ways he could never imagine, and it all started with one curious alien girl who couldn't resist the allure of human men. An hour later, Arthur strode into the café, spotting Gruss sitting alone at a table in the back. He slid into the seat across from her, the chair creaking under his weight. "'So you wanted to learn about humans?' he said, leaning back and crossing his arms. "'Where do you want to start?' Gruce's eyes sparkled with excitement. Everything. Your history, your culture, your world, I want to know it all. And so they talked for hours on end. Gruce revealed that the Rizians had been watching humanity from a distance for centuries, fascinated by their tenacity in the face of adversity. You humans are so resilient, she said, shaking her head in wonder. No matter what challenges you face, you always find a way to overcome them. It's inspiring. She spoke of the Rizians' love for human art, music, and literature, how they studied it in their schools and tried to emulate it in their own works. I've always dreamed of seeing a real human painting, she confessed, or hearing a live orchestra play one of your symphonies. In turn, Arthur told her about Earth, describing the towering peaks of the Himalayas, the endless blue of the Pacific, the lush rainforests teeming with life. Gruss hung on his every word her eyes wide with wonder. As they talked, Arthur began to realize that Gruss's interest in humanity went deeper than just academic curiosity. She seemed genuinely enthralled by the human spirit, by their ability to dream and create and explore, despite all the odds stacked against them. I've always wanted to visit Earth, Gruss admitted, her voice tinged with longing. But Rizian law forbids us from traveling to human territory without permission from the Galactic Council. They think it's too dangerous. Arthur leaned forward, his elbows on the table. What if I could help you get there, he said, the words tumbling out before he could stop them. I know a few people. I might be able to pull some strings. 
Gru stared at him, her mouth agape. You would do that for me? Arthur shrugged, trying to play it cool even as his heart raced. Sure, why not? Everyone deserves a chance to follow their dreams. Thank you, she whispered, her eyes brimming with tears. You have no idea how much this means to me. Arthur cleared his throat, suddenly feeling awkward. It's no big deal, he mumbled, but we'll have to be careful. If anyone finds out what we're planning... Arthur grinned, a mischievous glint in his eye. I think I know just the place. Meet me at the spaceport tomorrow night, Hangar 17. We'll talk more then. They parted ways, both buzzing with a mix of excitement and nerves. Arthur knew he was taking a huge risk, but somehow it felt right. There was something about Gruss that drew him in, like gravity. Besides, he'd never been one to back down from a challenge, and sneaking an alien onto Earth right under the noses of the Galactic Council? That was the ultimate challenge. Over the next few days, Arthur and Gruss met in shadowy corners of the spaceport, in abandoned warehouses and in the depths of the Rizian wilderness, carefully planning her escape to Earth. Arthur reached out to an old friend, Captain Jax Rowan, a fellow human living on the fringes of Rizian society. Jax was a smuggler, known across the galaxy for his ability to slip past any blockade and deliver his cargo undetected. Jax, I need a favor, Arthur said, his voice low and urgent over the encrypted comm channel. I've got a friend who needs passage to Earth, off the books. Can you help? Jax leaned back in his chair, his rugged features illuminated by the glow of the ship's controls. I might be able to swing it, he drawled, but it'll cost you. I'm putting my neck on the line here. Arthur took a deep breath. Name your price. There's a Rizian artifact, a crystal sphere said to contain the essence of their ancestors. It's kept in their most heavily guarded museum. Bring me that, and I'll take your friend to Earth, no questions asked. Arthur relayed the news to Gruss, watching as her face fell. I can't steal from my own people, she whispered, her voice trembling. It goes against everything I believe in. Arthur took her hand, his calloused fingers intertwining with her smooth, scaled ones. I know it's a lot to ask, he said softly, but this might be your only chance to see Earth, to follow your dreams. Isn't that worth the risk? Gruss closed her eyes, torn between her loyalty to her people and her burning desire to explore the universe beyond her world. Finally, she nodded. I'll do it, she said, her voice barely audible. For Earth... For us. Arthur got to work, using his mechanical expertise to craft a device that would allow Gruss to bypass the museum's state-of-the-art security systems. He spent hours hunched over his workbench, soldering wires and programming code, his brow furrowed in concentration. As they worked, Arthur and Gruss grew closer, their bond deepening with each passing day. They talked about their hopes and dreams, their fears and doubts. They shared stories of their worlds, marvelling at the differences and similarities between their cultures. On the night of the heist, Arthur and Gruss crept through the darkened streets of the Rizian capital, their hearts pounding in their chests. They slipped into the museum through a side entrance, Arthur's device humming softly as it disabled the alarms and cameras. They made their way to the central exhibit, where the crystal sphere sat on a pedestal, bathed in a soft, pulsing light. Gruss reached out, her fingers trembling as she lifted the artifact from its resting place. Suddenly the room was flooded with blinding light, and a group of armed Rizian guards burst through the doors, their weapons trained on Arthur and Gruss. Freeze! the lead guard shouted, his voice echoing off the high ceilings. Step away from the artifact and put your hands in the air. Run! Arthur yelled, dragging Gruss towards the exit. They sprinted through the winding corridors of the museum, the shouts of the guards and the blaring of alarms ringing in their ears. They burst out into the night, the cool air stinging their lungs as they raced through the empty streets. Behind them, the sounds of pursuit grew louder, the guards' footsteps pounding on the pavement. Arthur pulled Gruss into a narrow alley, pressing her against the wall as he peered around the corner. The guards ran past, their flashlights sweeping the darkness. Arthur grinned, his heart still racing from the adrenaline. Not yet, he said. 
We still have to get this to Jax and then get you to Earth, but first, we need to lay low for a while. The entire city will be looking for us. Arthur and Gruss slunk through the shadows of the spaceport, their faces obscured by the grease-smeared caps and coveralls of maintenance workers. Arthur led the way, his knowledge of the port's hidden passages guiding them through a maze of back alleys and service corridors. Gruss clutched the stolen artifact tightly to her chest, her heart pounding with a mixture of fear and exhilaration. This way, Arthur whispered, motioning for Gruss to follow as he ducked into a narrow passage between two towering cargo crates. The sound of pursuit echoed behind them, the shouts of Rizian guards growing louder with each passing second. As they emerged from the passage, the gleaming hull of Jax's ship came into view, its engines humming with barely restrained power. But between them and their escape stood a group of heavily armed bounty hunters, their weapons trained on the fugitives. Hand over the artifact and come quietly, the lead hunter growled, his scarred face twisted into a sneer, and maybe we'll let you live. Arthur's mind raced, calculating the odds of fighting their way through the hunters, but then an idea struck him. He reached into his pocket, his fingers closing around the small device he had used to bypass the museum's security. With a flick of his wrist, he tossed the device towards the nearest wall, where it attached itself with a metallic click. His fingers flew over the device's interface, hacking into the spaceport's announcement system. Suddenly, a blaring alarm filled the air, accompanied by a robotic voice, Attention, all personnel, emergency evacuation initiated. Please proceed to your designated safety zones immediately. Chaos erupted in the spaceport, with crowds of panicked travelers and workers rushing in all directions. The bounty hunters looked around in confusion, their attention momentarily diverted from their quarry. Arthur grabbed Gruss's hand and sprinted towards Jax's ship, weaving through the surging crowds. But as they neared the boarding ramp, a blaster bolt sizzled past Arthur's head, missing him by inches. He spun around, his eyes widening, as he saw one of the hunters taking aim for another shot. Time seemed to slow down as the hunter's finger tightened on the trigger, a malevolent grin spreading across his face. But just as the bolt left the blaster's muzzle, Arthur pushed Gruss out of the way, taking the brunt of the shot himself. White-hot pain exploded in his shoulder as he stumbled up the ramp, Gruss dragging him the rest of the way into the ship. The ramp hissed shut behind them, and Jax's voice crackled over the intercom. Hang on tight, folks, this is going to be a bumpy ride. The ship shuddered as it lifted off, the roar of its engines drowning out the shouts of the hunters below. Gruss knelt beside Arthur, her hands shaking as she examined his wound. Hold still, she said, her voice tight with worry as she reached for the medkit on the wall. I've studied human physiology. I can help. As Jax piloted the ship out of the spaceport and into the star-strewn void of space, Gruss carefully cleaned and dressed Arthur's wound, her touch gentle and sure. Arthur gritted his teeth against the pain, but he couldn't help but marvel at the way Gruss's scales shimmered in the ship's dim light or the way her brow furrowed in concentration as she worked. Finally, as the last vestiges of Rissia faded into the distance behind them, Arthur and Gruss collapsed into a pair of seats in the ship's cramped cockpit. They looked at each other, their chests heaving with exhaustion and relief. We did it, Gruss whispered, a smile spreading across her face. We're really doing this. The ship hurtled through the void, carrying Arthur and Gruss towards a future neither of them could have ever imagined, a future where a human and a Rizian, two beings from opposite ends of the galaxy, would forge a bond that would change the course of both their lives forever. Kaz Jax's ship hurtled through the void between stars. A blinking red light on the console caught his attention. He frowned, tapping the display. Arthur looked up from where he sat, Gruss still tending to his injured shoulder. Where? There's an old mining colony on an asteroid belt not too far from here, Jack said. Should be able to refuel and resupply there. Gruss's brow furrowed. I've never heard of a mining colony in this sector. Jack shrugged. It's been abandoned for years, off the charts, perfect place to lay low. As the ship approached the asteroid, the bleak, pockmarked surface came into view. 
towering structures of metal and rock jutted from the grey landscape, casting long shadows across the dust. Jack set the ship down near the colony's main compound, the landing gear sinking into the powdery regolith. The three companions donned spacesuits and stepped out into the airless void, their boots leaving crisp prints in the dust. They made their way into the heart of the colony, past rusting machinery and toppled comm towers. The buildings loomed above them, their windows dark and lifeless. Inside, the corridors were choked with debris and drifts of dust. Emergency lights flickered weakly, casting eerie shadows on the walls. The only sound was the hiss of their suit regulators and the crunch of their footsteps. Suddenly Gruss held up a hand, her eyes wide. Wait, she said, and do you hear that? Arthur strained his ears but heard nothing. What is it? A kind of pulsing coming from below us. They followed the sound, descending deeper into the bowels of the colony. Finally, they emerged into a cavernous chamber filled with strange machines and glowing tanks. Gruss approached one of the tanks, peering into its murky depths. Her eyes widened in horror. By the stars, she whispered. They were experimenting on living creatures, splicing their DNA, creating hybrids. Suddenly a piercing shriek echoed through the chamber. A monstrous creature burst from the shadows. All claws and teeth and rippling muscle, it lunged at them, its eyes blazing with feral rage. Arthur shoved Gruss aside, the creature's claws missing her by inches. He grabbed a metal pipe from the debris, swinging it at the beast's head. The creature staggered back, shaking its head. Then it charged again, its jaws snapping. Arthur ducked and rolled, luring it towards a rickety walkway suspended above the chamber. With a final desperate swing, he brought the pipe down on the walkway's support struts. The metal shrieked and buckled, sending the creature tumbling into the darkness below. But the sound of its fall was drowned out by a chorus of answering shrieks. More creatures emerged from the shadows, their eyes glinting with hunger. Run! Arthur yelled, grabbing Gruss's hand. They sprinted for the exit, Jax laying down covering fire with his blaster. They burst out into the asteroid's thin atmosphere, the roars of the creatures echoing behind them. Jack slapped the button to seal the ship's airlock, his chest heaving. What the hell were they doing here, he gasped. Gross shook her head, her eyes haunted. Something terrible, something that should never have been attempted. Arthur glanced out the viewport, at the horde of creatures swarming towards the ship. We have to get out of here, he said, before they tear us apart. But as Jax fired up the engines, a warning klaxon blared through the cockpit. The fuel line's been severed, he said, his face grim. We're not going anywhere. Arthur grabbed a toolkit from the wall, his jaw set. I'll fix it, he said. You two keep those things off me. He dove out of the airlock, scrambling towards the damaged fuel line. Behind him, Gruss and Jax took up positions on either side of the ship, their weapons at the ready. The creatures closed in, their claws gouging deep furrows in the regolith. Arthur worked frantically, his hands flying over the ruptured line. Sparks flew as he welded the breach shut, sweat beading on his brow. A creature lunged at him, its jaws wide. Gruss blasted it point-blank, its body tumbling away in a spray of ichor. Arthur, she screamed, hurry! With a final desperate twist, Arthur sealed the line. Go, he yelled, sprinting for the airlock. Jax punched the ignition, the engines roaring to life. The ship leapt from the asteroid's surface, the creatures howling in frustration as their prey escaped. As the asteroid dwindled behind them, Arthur collapsed into a seat, his heart hammering. Gruss knelt beside him, her hands shaking as she checked his suit for breaches. That was too close, she whispered. We nearly didn't make it. Arthur met her gaze, his eyes hard. But we did, and we're not going to let anything stop us from reaching Earth. Not bounty hunters, not rogue experiments, not the whole damn galaxy. Jax nodded, his face grim. We'll need to be more careful from now on. No more detours, no more risks. We head straight for Earth, and we don't look back. As the ship plunged into the starry void, Arthur and Gruss exchanged a look of determination. They had come too far, risked too much to turn back now. Earth was waiting, and they would reach it, no matter the cost.
Arthur slammed the control room door shut, Gruss and Jax dragging heavy crates to block it. The howls and shrieks of the hybrid creatures echoed through the metal, growing louder as they massed outside. Gruss and Arthur huddled over another terminal, searching frantically through the asteroid colony's fragmented records. Files flashed across the screen, experiment logs, genetic coding, video feeds of pulsing, mutating specimens. There, Gruss pointed at a schematic, her voice tight, the hybrid cybernetic implants, that must be how he controls them. Arthur enlarged the image, studying the intricate web of circuitry threaded through the creature's nervous systems. His brow furrowed as he cross-referenced it with the colony's power grid. An EMP might disrupt those implants, he said. Fry their circuits, shut them down. But the blast radius would have to be huge. We'd need to channel the energy from the main reactor core. Dr. Zoran's lab, Gruss said. It has direct access to the core, but it's on the other side of the colony, past all those things. A boom shook the room, claws raking jagged gashes in the door. Arthur's jaw clenched. He turned to Gruss, meeting her amber eyes. I'll go, he said. Jury rigger delivery system planted in the lab. You and Jax hold the fort here. Gruss gripped his arm, her sharp nails digging into his skin. No, this is my people's doing. Our hubris created those monsters. I should be the one to end them. I have to, she said, her voice cracking. Arthur, please, let me do this. Let me atone for what my kind has done. Arthur closed his eyes, his heart twisting in his chest. He wanted to argue, to take her place, to shield her from the horror beyond those walls. But he knew that look in her eyes, the steely determination, the desperate need to make things right. With a shuddering breath, he nodded. Okay, he whispered. Okay, but you come back to me, you hear? Don't you dare die on me now. Gruss smiled, a single iridescent tear tracing down her scaled cheek. Wouldn't dream of it, she said. As another impact rocked the door, Arthur raced to the power console, ripping out wires and circuits. His hands moved in a blur, splicing and soldering, his focus laser sharp. Jack swore as his screen flashed red. Turrets are a no-go, he said. Creatures must have ripped through the defense grid. It's just us now. Arthur connected a final wire, the makeshift EMP device humming to life in his hands. He pressed it into Gruss's hands, curling her slender fingers around it. Get to the lab, he said, his voice rough. Plug this into the main reactor control panel. It'll start a 60-second charge sequence. Once it's primed, run like hell. Don't look back. Gruss nodded, tucking the device into her suit. She paused, her hand hovering over the door controls. It will work, Arthur said fiercely. It has to. Gruss held his gaze for a long moment. Then, in a blur of motion, she leaned forward and pressed her lips to his. The kiss was brief, desperate, a supernova of emotion. She pulled away, her eyes shining. For luck, she whispered. Then, before he could respond, she slammed the door controls. The metal barrier slid open, revealing a seething mass of claws and teeth and fury. Gruss charged into the fray, a battle cry ripping from her throat. She wove between slashing talons and snapping jaws, moving with a fluid grace that belied her terror. The creatures howled, surging after her in a tide of rippling muscle and gleaming metal. Arthur and Jax opened fire, energy bolts stitching through the horde. But for every hybrid that fell, two more took its place. They pressed forward, relentless, implacable, driven by an insatiable hunger. Gruss disappeared around a corner, the creatures hot on her heels. Arthur's heart hammered in his chest, his every instinct screaming at him to follow her, to protect her. But he held his ground, pouring shot after shot into the advancing horde, Beside him, Jack snarled with each pull of the trigger, his face a mask of grim determination. For a moment, everything seemed to hold its breath. Then, with a final convulsive shudder, the hybrids collapsed, their bodies twitching and jerking as the EMP fried their systems. Arthur sagged against the console, his weapon falling from nerveless fingers. Jax let out a shaky laugh, wiping sweat from his brow, she did it, he said, his voice tinged with awe. That crazy Rizian actually did it. 
But Arthur was already moving, sprinting through the now still bodies of the creatures. His heart pounded in his ears, a single thought consuming his mind. Arthur ripped a metal panel off the wall, exposing a tangle of wires and circuits. His fingers danced over the components, rerouting power, splicing connections. Sweat beaded on his brow as the screeches of the hybrids grew closer. How's that trap coming? Jax yelled over the din of his ship's weapons fire. Almost there, Arthur grunted. Just need to bypass the safety protocols and overload the gravity plates. With a final twist of a wire, the trap hummed to life. Arthur slammed the panel back into place and sprinted to Jax's side, snatching up his discarded blaster. Here they come, he said, taking aim at the corridor. A wave of hybrid surged around the corner, their misshapen bodies a nightmarish fusion of flesh and metal. Arthur fired, the blaster bolt searing through the creature's hides. But for every hybrid that fell, two more took its place. They pressed forward, heedless of their fallen brethren, their eyes blazing with mindless fury. Now! Arthur yelled. Jax flipped a switch, and the gravity plates in the corridor flared a blinding blue. The hybrids howled as they were yanked off their feet, their bodies slamming into the ceiling with bone-crushing force. Arthur and Jax poured fire into the writhing mass of creatures, the stench of burnt flesh filling the air. But even as they thinned the horde's numbers, Arthur's heart pounded with fear for Gruss. Somewhere in the depths of the colony she was fighting her own battle, and he could only pray that she would emerge victorious. Gruss crawled through the narrow ventilation shaft, her suit's hud casting an eerie green glow over her face. She paused at an intersection, her keen Rizian senses straining to detect any sign of the hybrids. Silence. The creatures hadn't discovered this route yet. She allowed herself a brief moment of relief before pressing on, following the schematics Arthur had uploaded to her suit's computer. The central generator was close now. Just a few more twists and turns and she'd be there. Gruss tried not to think about what would happen if she failed, if the EMP device didn't work. The fate of countless worlds hung in the balance. Anne found herself face to face with Dr. Zoran. The Rizian scientist was barely recognizable, his body a grotesque patchwork of cybernetic enhancements. His eyes glowed a soulless red, his face twisted into a cruel sneer. Ah, Gruss, he said, his voice a metallic rasp. I was wondering when you'd arrive. Gruss slowly rose to her feet, her hand tightening around the EMP device. It's over, Zoran, she said. Your creatures won't leave this asteroid. Zoran laughed, the sound grating and inhuman. Oh, my dear girl, he said, you have no idea what you've stumbled into. He gestured to the generator, its core pulsing with sickly green light. This device is more than just a power source, he said. It's the key to my greatest creation yet. Gruss's blood ran cold as the realization dawned on her. You're going to use the EMP to disable the colony's defenses, she whispered, to let your monsters loose on the galaxy. Zoran grinned, his metal teeth glinting. Very good, he said, but that's only the beginning. With the knowledge I've gained from studying these creatures, I will create an army the likes of which the universe has never seen. He cocked his head, his red eyes boring into Gruss. And you and your human friend will be the crown jewels of my collection. Imagine what secrets I might unlock from your hybrid biology. Gruss snarled, her fear giving way to rage. She lunged at Zoran, her Rizian martial training guiding her movements. But Zoran was fast, his cybernetic reflexes matching her blow for blow. They danced around the generator, a deadly ballet of strikes and counter-strikes. I've been watching you, Zoran taunted as they fought, ever since you left Rizia. You and that human, Arthur. Such a fascinating specimen. He lashed out, his metal fist grazing Gruss's cheek. She stumbled back, tasting blood. I will take great pleasure in dissecting him, Zoran continued, in learning what makes him tick, and you, my dear, will have a front-row seat. Gruss roared, a primal sound of fury and desperation. She leapt at Zoran, her fist connecting with his jaw in a satisfying crunch of metal. Zoran reeled back, his cybernetic implants sparking and sputtering. 
Gruss pressed her advantage, raining down blows on his weakened form. With a final, mighty kick, she sent Zoran flying across the room. He slammed into the wall and crumpled to the ground, his body twitching and jerking. Gruss didn't hesitate. She raced to the generator, slamming the EMP device into its control panel. The device hummed to life, its countdown sequence blinking on the display. But as Gruss turned to make her escape, the room shuddered violently. Cracks spiderwebbed across the walls, dust and debris raining down from the ceiling. Gruss's heart seized as she realized the terrible truth. The EMP had triggered a chain reaction in the generator, destabilizing the asteroid's core. The colony was tearing itself apart. And she was trapped in the middle of it. Gruss frantically searched for an exit, but the room was collapsing around her, huge chunks of metal and stone crashing down on all sides. She dove under a console, curling into a ball as the world shook itself to pieces. Her last thought as the darkness closed in was of Arthur, of his fierce determination, his unwavering loyalty, his gentle touch. She closed her eyes, picturing his face as the roar of the collapsing colony filled her ears. Arthur and Jax raced through the crumbling corridors, the ground shaking beneath their feet. Chunks of metal and stone crashed down around them, the air thick with dust and smoke. They burst through the doors, only to find the room in ruins. Twisted metal and sparking wires littered the floor, the generator itself a smouldering wreck. No, Arthur whispered, rushing to her side. He scanned her suit, his heart sinking as he saw her oxygen levels plummeting. We have to get her out of here, Jack said, his voice strained. This whole place is coming down. Arthur looked around desperately, his mind racing. Then his eyes fell on a heap of scrap metal in the corner. Help me with this! he said, rushing over to the pile. He grabbed a length of pipe, his hands flying as he bent and twisted it into shape. Jax joined him, his strong arms making quick work of the heavier pieces. Together they assembled a crude but sturdy lever, its fulcrum balanced on a mound of rubble. They positioned the lever under the beam, Arthur's muscles straining as he pushed down with all his might. The beam groaned, then slowly began to lift. Suddenly a horrifying laugh echoed through the room. Arthur and Jack spun around, their blood running cold. There, rising from the debris like a nightmare made flesh, was Dr. Zoran. His cybernetic implant sparked and sputtered, his flesh torn and bleeding. But his eyes blazed with an unholy light, a madness that knew no bounds. You think you've won, he rasped, his voice a metallic snarl. You think you can defeat me. He lunged at Arthur his metal claws slashing through the air. Arthur dodged the claws, missing his face by inches. Jax charged forward, slamming into Zoran with a roar. They tumbled to the ground, a tangle of flesh and metal. Arthur turned back to the lever, his arms burning with effort. The beam lifted another inch, then another. Gruss stirred, her eyes fluttering open. Arthur, she whispered, her voice weak, leave me, save yourself. He scooped her up, cradling her against his chest. Behind him, Jax and Zoran traded blows, the sound of their battle drowned out by the colony's death throes. Arthur raced towards the door, Gruss's weight slowing him down. The walls buckled and warped, the floor cracking beneath his feet. They burst out into the corridor, just as the room collapsed behind them. A wall of dust and debris chased them down the hallway, the roar of the collapse deafening. Arthur ran, his lungs burning, his legs pumping. He could see Jax's ship ahead, its engines flaring to life. If I can't have this world, he hissed, then no one can. Arthur's mind raced, desperation and adrenaline surging through his veins. His eyes fell on a canister of fuel lying abandoned in the rubble. He snatched it up, hurling it with all his strength at Zoran. The canister shattered, drenching the mad scientist in liquid fire, Zoran screamed, his flesh bubbling and blistering. He clawed at his face, the detonator falling from his grasp. Gruss raised Jax's discarded blaster, her arm shaking with effort. She fired a single bolt of searing energy. The fuel ignited, engulfing Zoran in a ball of flame. His screams turned to shrieks of agony.
his body flailing as the fire consumed him. Arthur and Gruss stumbled up the ramp of Jax's ship, the heat of the flames scorching their backs. Jack slammed the hatch shut, his fingers flying over the controls. The ship surged forward, the force of the acceleration pressing them back into their seats. Behind them, the colony exploded in a blinding flash of light, the shockwave buffeting the ship like a leaf in a hurricane. But they were free, the void of space opening up before them like a promise of hope. Arthur held Gruss close, her head resting on his shoulder. They had fought the monsters, both within and without. They had stared into the face of madness and emerged unbroken. And now, as the stars streaked past the viewport, they knew that nothing could stop them. Not the dangers of the frontier, not the machinations of their enemies. For they had each other, and the boundless spirit of humanity that burned within them, and with that they could face anything the universe had in store. As Jax's ship hurtled away from the exploding asteroid, the comm unit crackled to life. A grim-faced human in an admiral's uniform filled the screen. Captain Rowan, this is Admiral Vance of Earth Defense Command. We've received an urgent communication from the Rizian government regarding the incident on the asteroid colony. The Rizians have sent a delegation to Earth, led by Ambassador Zoran himself. They're warning us about the potential threat of Dr. Zoran's creatures and requesting our aid in tracking down any that may have escaped. They've also demanded that Gruss return to Rizia immediately to face judgment for her role in these events. I can't let you face this alone, he said. I'm coming with you. Gruss shook her head. Arthur, no, you've done enough. This is my responsibility. But Arthur's eyes blazed with determination. We're in this together, Gruss. I won't abandon you now. Jax leaned forward, his brow furrowed. I've got contacts in the galactic underworld. I can put out feelers, see if anyone spotted any of those creatures. Make sure they don't cause any more trouble. As they approached Rysia, a sleek warship materialized from the void, its hull bristling with weapons. A stern voice crackled over the comm. Unidentified vessel, this is Commander Vortex of the Rysian Defense Force. You are harboring fugitives wanted for crimes against the Rysian people. Surrender them immediately, or be destroyed. Arthur stepped forward, his voice calm and even. Commander Vortex, this is Arthur Henderson of Earth. I understand your position, but there's more to this situation than you know. I propose a deal. The commander's eyes narrowed. What sort of deal? I will surrender myself to Rizian custody in exchange for Gruss's freedom and the opportunity to present evidence of Dr. Zoran's crimes before your council. Vortex scoffed. You would sacrifice yourself for a Rizian traitor? She's no traitor, Arthur said firmly. She risked everything to stop a madman from unleashing horrors on the galaxy. And I believe your council will see that, if given the chance. There was a long pause, then grudgingly Vortex spoke. Very well, human. Your terms are acceptable. Prepare to be boarded. As the warship loomed closer, Arthur turned to Gruss, his eyes soft. I love you too, Gruss, no matter what happens. The airlock hissed open, and a squad of armed Rizian soldiers marched aboard. They pulled Arthur and Gruss to their feet, snapping restraints around their wrists. As they were led away, Jax called after them, his voice rough with emotion. Give them hell, you two. I'll be right behind you, cleaning up any loose ends. The soldiers escorted Arthur and Gruss onto the warship, the airlock ceiling shut behind them with a clang of finality. The ship pulled away, turning its sleek prow towards the shimmering lights of the Rizian capital. Towards an uncertain future, and a trial that would decide the fate of two worlds. Arthur stood before the Rizian council, his heart pounding as he faced the stern gazes of the assembled delegates. The chamber was vast its walls adorned with intricate mosaics depicting the history of Rizian civilization. But Arthur had no time to admire the artistry. He had a mission to complete. He stepped forward, his voice ringing out clear and strong. Esteemed members of the Council, I come before you today not as a conqueror or a thief, but as a seeker of truth and justice. He activated the holographic display, 
the evidence of Dr. Zoran's crimes flickering to life in the air before them. This man, Dr. Zoran, sought to unleash unspeakable horrors upon the galaxy. He experimented on living beings, twisting them into monstrous abominations designed for war and destruction. The council members murmured amongst themselves, some nodding in agreement, others frowning in skepticism. Arthur pressed on, his voice rising with passion. But his crimes do not end there, for Dr. Zoran did not act alone, no, he had help from within the highest echelons of Rizian society. He turned, his gaze locking with Ambassador Zoran's. The elder Rizian's face was a mask of calm, but Arthur could see the flicker of fear in his eyes. Ambassador Zoran, Arthur said, his voice cold as steel. Your own brother, you knew of his experiments, didn't you? More than that, you funded them, hoping to use his creatures as pawns in your political games. The chamber erupted in chaos, delegates shouting and gesticulating wildly. Ambassador Zoran leaped to his feet, his face twisted with rage. But Gruss stepped forward, her head held high. No, father, she said, her voice trembling with emotion. He speaks the truth, and I can prove it. Her Ambassador Zoran's face drained of color, his mouth opening and closing like a beached fish. The council members turned to him, their expressions ranging from shock to disgust. Her Ambassador Zoran, the head councillor said, her voice heavy with disappointment. What do you have to say for yourself? But the ambassador said nothing. He simply slumped back into his seat, his shoulders sagging in defeat. The head councillor turned to Arthur and Gruss, her gaze softening. You have done a great service to the Rizian people, she said. You have exposed a traitor in our midst and prevented a terrible calamity. But your actions, however noble, have also caused great damage to the relationship between our worlds. Arthur nodded, his heart heavy. He knew what was coming. Arthur Henderson of Earth, the counselor said, her voice formal and unyielding. For your role in these events, you are hereby exiled from Rissian space. You may never return on pain of death. The counselor turned to her, her expression sympathetic. Gruss Zoran of Rizia, she said, in light of your bravery and sacrifice, we grant you a reprieve, but you are stripped of your rank and position. You are no longer a member of Rizian society. Gruss closed her eyes, tears streaming down her face. Arthur reached out, taking her hand in his. As they left the chamber, Jax was waiting for them, his face grim. I'm sorry, he said. I wish I could do more. Arthur shook his head, managing a small smile. You've done more than enough, my friend. Thank you. Gruss took a deep breath, her eyes meeting Arthur's. I'm coming with you, she said, her voice steady. I can't stay here, not after everything that's happened. I want to be with you, wherever that takes us. Arthur's heart soared, even as it ached for all that Gruss was giving up. Are you sure? he asked. You'll be leaving everything behind. Gruss nodded, her gaze unwavering. I'm sure you're my everything now. They boarded Jax's ship, watching as Rizia receded into the distance. Arthur held Gruss close, their tears mingling as they mourned all they had lost and all they had gained. They knew their journey was far from over. There were still dangers to face, wrongs to right, a galaxy to explore, but they would face it all together, side by side, partners in all things. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.